I would like to continue my discussion of using surfaces in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now by doing this I'm not saying that surface work is better than modeling work. I'm just saying it's another way of doing things. Most of the operations I'm going to do can be done in modeling. I'm just going to use some surfacing. So the first one is to find out the volume of oil below a certain level in an oil pan. I have made a, a work plane that's a half inch below the, the mounting surface of the oil pan, which is a surface, and that's where the oil needs to go. So I need to find the volume of this irregular shaped oil pan. So I'll leave that off for a second. To do this, I must have a completely enclosed area. So I need to plug this whole drain hole in the bottom with a surface. So I go to Patch, Create a Patch, and go over that hole with a surface. New body, and so there's my patch over the oil hole right there. So now I'm ready to go to find the volume. So I'll go to Boundary Fill, which is also located in the modeling environment, and I'll pick on all the surrounding surfaces. The body of the oil pan is one, the plug we just put, and the oil level work plane. Now I switch to select cells and I have three to choose from. The one I want is this one, which is the oil, represents the oil solid. Say OK and there is the oil solid. Let me just turn off the other ones to show you the full solid. Picking up all the indications and areas of the pan. All I now need to do is right click on that and pull up the properties. I now have my volume which I can convert very easily to quarts or gallons or whatever I want. One of my favorite uses of surfaces in Fusion 360 is the replace face command. You can draw any surface you want in front of a face and then substitute this face for that surface. I'm going to make this square plunger have a rounded end or a spherical end. So I've got me a work plane sitting out front. I'm going to go ahead and just make a sphere. Pick on that work plane and the center. Now for the diameter of it, I want to pick up the diagonal across the face. So I'm going to pick up measure. Pick on the surface and then pick two points, that one and that one. Now I do know that I have my decimal places pretty low, so I'm just going to up it by one thousandths to make sure I'm covering the decimals. So I have my surface. Now this is a solid. I cannot replace faces with a solid. So I'm going to use a different technique. I could split it and then unstitch it to make a surface, but I'm going to do it a little different. Go to patch. I'm going to pick offset. Pick on the sphere and leave it at zero to make a new body. I now have a surface. So I'm going to turn off the body. I really don't need it anymore. Just the surface now is resulting. Now I'm going to split that in two. So I'm going to go to modify. I'm going to split the body. Using the work plane that I had before, I'll pick on the body, which is a surface. I'll now pick on the plane in the center and split it. One side I don't need, so I just do this one. I'm going to make it invisible. So now I have a surface. I have a surface, as you can see. Now I'm going to use the replace face command on this. It's located back in the model environment under modify called replace face. Now Invent Fusion tells me that I can use any surface. It'll extend it or cut it. But I find that with a sear it's better to cut it. I'll try it with this but it'll probably fail. This is a surface I want to replace and I'll pick this and it'll probably fail which it did. So what I'm going to do is just quickly press pull this out until it goes past it and do it again. 
So go to replace face, pick on this face, pick on the surface, and you see it works perfectly. Turn off the surface body again, and now I have a perfect spherical end on the end of my square rod. You can model anything with surfaces. The rule of surfacing says that once I close in a area with a surface, this has an open top, and then stitch it all together to become a solid. Let's do that. If I go to patch, pick up patch, and patch the top, it's still a surface with a closed in top. I'll prove that with a section through it. Now, the rule is if you stitch this surface and this one together, it instantly becomes a solid. You can use this to your advantage many times. What I'm going to go ahead and do is make this body a component so I can transfer it to another part. Make a component, copy it, move my other part which is a solid block and paste it. I know that I need to just move it down into the center because it is modeled right on the center. Just be sure it's enclosed. Now, going back to my model environment, under combine, I'm just going to subtract that brought in component from the block. So I pick the block, then I pick the tool body as the component I just brought in, the body from that, and cut it. Don't keep the body. Let's cut a section through it. Take a look. You'll see it's a hollow, which we expected. Nothing magic about that. But here's what's cool. If I go to my patch environment, pick up on offset, Pick inside that, leave it zero, make it a new body. I now have a new surface body. Let's just move it out to prove that. I'll move it back so it's out of the section. And you see it's another surface body. So you can do the same thing with this. You could patch it over and then stitch it back up to make a solid. Or you could do anything else with it you want before you did that. Just another way to make a part over and over go over from a mold. Another great use of boundary fill is to make solid forms from bounded planes. We've actually done this earlier, but I just want to do another part. I have a series of sketches here and building a cabriole leg for a woodworking project. I've just been roughing it in. You'll see the general shape. It's not dimensioned particularly or constrained, just been practicing with it. I also close in the ends with two sketches. So I've got two sketches, or actually three sketches. The end one is the third one. The basic shape is 9 degrees apart. I actually did one sketch and copied it to the second. We go back to home and next thing I want to do with it is extrude each sketch out 3 inches so they all intersect and close in the area. As you can see I have surfaces going both ways on the underlying sketches. Next thing I do I want to make the solid from this. Go to the patch environment, pick up, by the way it's also located in model environment called boundary fill. It's in both of them, patch or model. I pick on all the surfaces. So I'm just going to do it from the browser. Makes it easy. Once I pick them all, the part is fully enclosed. Select the cell and again the little checkbox. I have my sample leg. Turn off the bodies except the one I want to see which was a new body. 
right there. There's my leg. So this is used in compound sawing and woodworking, but I get a basic shape of my leg. I then would just fillet it out or sand it out to the nice curved shape. Another use of surfaces.